that men and women are different. Um, we construe gender differently, and those gender differences actually, by and large, work out okay. That said, I'm acutely aware of the fact that women are not treated equally, and women are not paid equally for equal work, and that's a problem. Let me give you one very simple example from my own Jewish theological seminary, because I've been there 40 years, and the first 20, first 15, we did not ordain women as rabbis. So I lived through the kind of um, anguish of coming to the decision of whether or not we should ordain women. Once we finally took the decision to ordain women, there was an interesting, although in retrospect, obvious side benefit, which was this. The candidate pool suddenly doubled. Right? Instead of just having men, you now had men and women. Twice as many applicants. When you have twice as many applicants, but you want a class size to be roughly the same, that means you can take a lot smarter student. <laughs> so A, the student body just got a whole lot smarter by giving equality to women. <laughs> B, women came with a somewhat different agenda. If Carol Gilligan is writing her book in a different voice, you know, women are more interested about social issues, um, networking. And I actually think if I can, um, you know, take that phrase from the first President Bush, um, we are a kinder, gentler seminary mm -hmm. as a result, which makes us, of course, better clergy. Mm -hmm. So I, I think that uh, the more we push to women's equality, the better. I just read a book by a scholar named Isabel Komen, who is writing about um, Muslim countries. And she makes a very direct link between economic improvement in those countries and women's rights. The more women have rights in those countries, the more women can work the more quickly the economy approves. So there are many good arguments for full equality for women, um, and that full equality for women in turn makes the world actually a better place. <laughs>